what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so i'm gonna check out chavo guerrero on um benoit's murder slash suicide now we all know about the chris benoit situation it's still one of wrestling's darkest moments um no one expected him to do that and it's just a touchy subject anytime you bring up chris benoit um anytime it, he's even mentioned it's not talking about his in-ring work and his you know the things that, that he uh brought to the wrestling business it usually ends up being about this situation which is just tragic in itself so we're gonna check this out see what um chavo guerrero had to say about this whole situation appreciate all love and support you guys have shown on the channel and let's get right into this one man so what happened that last that last weekend? And we, we you guys were traveling together. It was just you two at this point in time, right? So true, you know. Uh, so, oh well, in, uh, Scott Armstrong would jump in every once in a while with us, you know. Right. Kind of the three of us, you know. And um, so you'd meet at the airport for the beginning of a loop. Yeah, so I'd you, fly in from California. He'd fly in from from Georgia, and we'd fly into wherever they say we flew into, you know, Louisiana. We'd meet, and then we, you know, so one of us would get the car, and then we'd travel four days together, and then we. would drop the car off the airport and we fly our separate ways home for two days and right back. And that was for, you know, eight straight months. So, uh, this one was a little different because we were close to, um, to Georgia. Right. So I ended up staying, uh, we, we went home and anytime, you know, a wrestler can spend the night in his own bed, he does, mm -hmm. whether it's 300 mile drive or 500 mile drive, mm -hmm. because we're, you know, we're never home in our, in our beds. So we were able to go to his house and I'd never even seen his house. He moved away from everybody. He moved to the rural, rural part of, of Atlanta just so, because, you know, he was such a, you know, a, a loner. He's a lone wolf. Mm -hmm. And that he didn't want, um, you know, people to know kind of where he lived and stuff. He had a P.O. box. Really? Yeah, the whole deal. Did you ever go to his house? Yeah, so, so we went wow. to his house and stayed at his house. And I, he, I remember he said, hey, guys, hey, I'm really private. Please, please don't tell anybody about my house, you know, how it is. Wow. And I was like, all right, cool, no problem. No problem, Chris. So we stayed there. And we you stayed, and Scott? No, me. me oh, you by myself. Me. Okay, you and yeah, Chris, gotcha. He and I. So we, we stayed there that night and got up in the morning. And he, uh, you know, by the time I woke up, he already had steaks and, and eggs ready to go for us. You know, mm -hmm. The protein oh, yeah. diet, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ready to go. We we're going to work out, you know. And I saw his his son, um, Daniel, there. And, uh, you know, I was the cruiserweight champ at the time. So I had, uh, I gave, uh, you know, Daniel the, the belt. He, you know, he really wanted to see the belt. So I know he went to Chris and his dad, Kenna Kenna. And so Chris was like, Ask him, ask him, can, can I, can I see your belt? And I was like, wow. yeah, of course. So he held the belt. I like, you're the champ. We put him on, took pictures with him, the whole deal, you know, and, Damn, and all that. Man. So we went from there and did our loop, did our, you know, four. And what's crazy is he was a family man. That's what, I think that's what kind of shocked the whole wrestling world is this guy was a family man. He loved his family. So for someone to love their family and then to go to that dark place and to ultimately do what he did to his family is is it's crazy that is that's just mind-boggling bro you would never think someone that really truly loves their family would do something like that so it's just that's what probably made it so shocking for everybody four days together and then we ended up uh ended up in in north carolina charlotte i believe because we uh We'd have seen an old friend from WCW. Remember Donna Seaman? Yeah, yeah, Donna yeah. and Donna and her sister Deb. We ended up uh, um, the last night of the loop before we were all getting ready to fly home. We went to uh, go eat with them at night after the show. So we went and just ate and stuff. And I just remember Chris ordering shots like a tequila. Like, yeah, we're doing a tequila shot every once in a while. He'd be like, he never, you know, he'd have a couple beers and that was it. But every once in a while, yeah. he'd like, okay, let's do this. Or, and and yeah. they start drinking. Oh, all right. Or so. eat a whole cheesecake. Like yeah, he yeah. never ate a sweet, and then one day he just would, like, eat a whole one. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like, what are you doing? A yeah. whole cheesecake. Yeah, yeah. Put the whole thing in his mouth. Yeah. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah. And then laugh. Yeah. So he'd order ordering shots. We're doing shots of tequila and stuff and have a good time. And then I was pretty jacked up, you know. So we go, we go to our own room. I go to sleep. And we got to get up in two hours to catch mm -hmm. his flight. So I'm sleeping. It's up my alarm or everything. Well, we probably had eight shots of tequila, you know, a few beers. So next thing you know, I hear the door bang it, bam, 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 bam. What the heck is that? Bam, 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 bam. I, what was I? I'm like in a dream. What? Well, I go to it. He was like, Chavo, we got to go. I'm like, what time is it? Oh, man, I slipped through my alarm. I never slipped through my alarm, ever. I slipped through my alarm. I was like, oh, my, we, we got to catch this flight. 
So we jumped in the, in the, we didn't know shower. We, I mean, I was, I just threw all the stuff in, in, in my bag and we jumped in the car and we raced to the airport and I, I ended up, uh, we have, you know, getting to our, to the plane and, and he made his flight. I missed my flight from, okay. Right. Gotcha. I missed my flight. So he made it just barely, you know, I had a miss my flight. So I caught, you know, the next flight out an hour later. Um, when I landed in my connection, I landed in, uh, we were in North Carolina. So he went to Atlanta on one hour flight. I had to go to, to, uh, Texas. I think I landed in Dallas. So I get a call from him. Hey man, just checking up on you. Did you, uh, you know, did you make it okay? So yeah, man, I'm okay. Thanks. You know, thanks for getting me up. Man, I can't, I never sleep through my alarm. Ah, no problem, man. No problem. No problem. So I went my way. He went his way. And in two and a half days, we were going to hook up again. You know, we were on the road again. So now it's, uh, Belmont, Texas, I believe. And I, uh, this is on like a Saturday or a this, Friday. This is now Saturday. And what's crazy is how these guys just, it's like a routine for them. They're just, they're constantly on the go to another city to do another show. Like that's crazy how on the go they are. And that's why once again, you got to give respect to these wrestlers because they don't, they get time with the family, but not much because they're always on the road. There's always a show they got to go to. And you know, they got to make sure they connect to certain flights and stuff like that. It's, 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 it can be hectic, man. Morning. Okay. So the, the first one we left about from probably Wednesday morning. Yeah. So now it's Saturday morning early. I land in Dallas, my connection. And, uh, we always, that's, we always get on the phone and, you know, we can coordinate what time you get in. Yeah. The whole deal. I'll pick you up or he'll pick me up, whatever. So, um, I call him, no answer. Then all of a sudden I get a, a call from him. And he's like, oh, call right back. Hey, Chavo, hey, what's up, man? He sounds just off. I'm like, man, you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool, man. Just just really bad, a really, really just bad weekend. I just, you know, Daniel and Nancy are sick, his wife, you know, and, you know. Uh, I had... So you're actually talking to him at this point. I'm talking to him, yeah. And he's and this is basically after he's probably killed his wife. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, They're sick. Damn. Oh, and he doesn't, Chavo doesn't even know. Damn. So he's just thinking he's having a regular conversation and damn, you know, they're not feeling good. And I'm like, all right, all right, cool. And were well, you coming in? Yeah, uh, I missed my flight. I missed my flight, but don't worry. I'm going to catch another flight and, and I'll be there. Okay, I could just call me when you get in and I'll pick you up, you know, no matter what time it is. You know, I we were landing in Houston. I had to drive to Belmont and um, I was like, you know, don't worry about it. We're late, we're late. No, I'll, I'll wait for you. Okay, okay, so. He gets off the, he, getting ready to get off the phone, and and he goes, he makes a point of it. It stops. He goes, Chavo, Chavo. I go, yeah. And he goes, I love you. I said, I love you too, man. Was it too odd, you know, off off kilter? Because we always oh, tell each other man. we love each other. Yeah. But this was really forced. It was not. It was not forced. It was really like made a point of it. It was like, hey, man, okay, I love you, brother. Okay, no, it was like, Chavo, I love you. I want you to understand this. Basically, if you don't forget this, coming from a man with very few words, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "All right, I love you too, bro." So I hung up, and I thought that was strange. So I called him right back, and I go, "Hey, man, are you are you all right?" I'm fine, man. Like I said, I just had a a real hard weekend, you know, and 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 just you know, you know, real hard weekend, and they, I had to go to take him, you know, Daniel and Nancy to the hospital. And I'm like, oh, okay, man. Well, I'm here. Okay, okay, man. Okay, cool, cool. So then, hung up, and that was the last I actually talked to him. I guess he'd call Scott Armstrong too. We, he and I hooked up. Scotty, we hooked up and we ended up driving, waiting for Chris. No call, no call, no call. I'm calling. Hey, dude, did you miss your flight? Did you make your another your your new flight? No call, no answer, no answer. Oh, okay, well, man. I guess we got to drive. Well, if we got to come back, you know, we said if we got to come back from and go pick him up, we will. So we went to the show and. You know, the agents were asking, where's Chris? Where's Chris? This is a house show. House show. Right. House show. Where's Chris? Chris. Next day was was a, was a pay-per-view, pay-per-view yeah. in Houston. Well, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't I don't know. Um, Mrs. Fly, you know, he's going to, okay, okay. So um, we drive to Houston the next day, me and me and Scotty. And, uh, and still no words. Still no from Chris. We're calling him, okay, nothing. I get some texts on my phone at probably 5 a.m. And I get text from Chris. So and you they, wake up in the morning. You've got not even before. It woke me up before okay, the, the text, five okay. in the morning. So I look and I look at the uh, my text, and I'm like, "That's weird." It says the dogs are in the enclosed pool area. The garage door is open. I looked at. It, I was like, well, "That's weird." 
is this one of those texts that you get? You know, sometimes you get texts, you know, from three days ago, you never delivered yeah. it, and then all of a sudden you got a text. And this was kind of the start of texting, you know, now it's a little different. But yeah, back it was then, 2007. A lot of times, you know, texts didn't come through and they got lost, and all of a sudden you got them, and I was like, what? Well, you get neat. half a text. Half a text, yeah, that was weird. So, so yeah. okay, I, I wrote it off. Then I get another text from Nancy's phone, from his wife's phone, and it said the same thing, you know, the same text. That's really weird. Okay, whatever. Uh, I kind of wrote it off. So then I had to get up in two hours. So I got up. I look at, um, I go downstairs to meet uh, Scotty Armstrong. And uh, I look at him. I go, did you get some weird, anything weird last night happen? And he goes, yeah, I got some weird texts from, from Chris. I said, me too. Did it say this? He goes, yeah. So we call Chris. No answer. No answer. No answer. That's weird. So we go to the pay-per-view. Chris isn't showing up. And they're asking us, where's he at? Uh, I'm not sure. We're not sure where he's at. Now we're covering for him. We right. think maybe, you know. Blatantly lying. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 You know, blatantly, you know, whatever. We're just covering for him. No, I haven't heard from him. I don't know what's going on. Okay, great. Didn't tell us anything about the text, nothing. Did yeah. you feel something was going on weird something, at this point? Something was going on. Something was going on. And I remember Arn Anderson saying. Especially if he sent this text to multiple people that he knew and trust. Like, hey. That's, I'm, I mean, I'm once again, they, they got a lot going on. There's a pay-per-view they got to get ready for. So there's a lot going on. Of course, on the surface, you would think, whoa, that's a red flag. Like, why would they be, why would he send out a text describing where the dogs are and the garage is open and all this other stuff? But at the time, I'm sure they weren't thinking that. They were just, you know, kind of trying to figure out where he was. But at the same time, they also got to figure out, you know, get ready for pay per view and all this other stuff, so they're focusing on multiple things, but still, like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Chris, but they didn't want to alert nobody yet. But damn, bro, this is just eerie. This is later on in the day because he was supposed to wrestle the pay per view. He was for, supposed to wrestle for the title. For, yeah, the the ECW championship against CM Punk. He was supposed to wrestle for him, wrestle him, and this is a big match. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember Arn Anderson saying, "You know what? If Benoit didn't show up with no word, he's either has." just take it off to like Alaska and mm. he's going to be like a, you know, a merchant Marine or something or he's, or he's dead basically. That's, and, and, I remember him saying that not wow. meaning it is he, he's right. dead, but there's something going on for him not to show up. And either wow. option being just as viable. Cause I could see him just going off to become a merchant Marine saying, and, and screw us. Yeah. Yeah. And being gone, you know, based on right. the, the ending of Dexter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, and Damn. then, uh, so I didn't say anything. We didn't say anything. The next day, we're in Corpus Christi for a super show, another super show. And uh, those damn super shows, man. Handle this guy. Yeah. But and you still didn't know anything. We still didn't know. We've been calling, been calling, been calling. So finally, I go to Johnny and I go, Johnny. Johnny was the head of talent relations. Mm -hmm. I go, Johnny, this is my phone. This is what I got yesterday. And he's like, you know, with his Johnny voice, hey, what are you talking about? Why didn't you show me this yesterday? I said, Johnny, we're trying to cover for him. Mm -hmm. Be honest with you, I didn't know what was going on. We're covering for him. He's like, "Oh, I need to get on the phone." So I guess they called the Atlanta police or whatever, and and I don't know anything about it. You know, that's the last thing I heard. And then all of a sudden, about an hour later, they do a big old meeting at the ring with all the wrestlers, and then they did this periodically. You know, to talk about you know, yeah, they would have like a like a team meeting, yeah, with the companies going, or you know, Vince had to say something big. You know, so yeah. we go to the meeting. We're sitting there, and I look at Ric Flair, and Ric Flair's crying. And, oh, and I go, no. Rick, what's going on? And he goes, they're gone. I said, what do you mean they're gone? And I, this is before anybody Damn. knew anything. And he goes, Daniel, Nancy, and Chris. And I said, what do you mean they're gone? Oh, my. Oh, and bro, this, this, uh, I, uh, I can only imagine. I'm starting to get emotional just hearing that. I can only imagine you, someone telling you, they're gone. They don't give you any context. You're like, what are you talking about? They're gone. Ah, that's tough, bro. And I, ha I had to hear it from his mouth. I couldn't hear his, hear that. He said, they're gone. What do you mean they're gone? Those are dead. It's just now, right now, my heart just dropped again. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. I was like, and, and Vince hadn't announced it to everybody yet. And I'm sitting there ne next to everybody. And I just put my head down and was like, mm, what? Well, are you kidding me? This is a two years or a year and a half after Eddie died. Yeah. You know, oh, I had another friend. God. This happened to another friend of mine. I was like, what are you talking about? And sure enough, man, I then all of a sudden Vince announces it to people and saying, we don't know the circumstances at this time. All we know is that there's been a death and uh, Chris Benoit is no longer with us and his um, son and his uh, uh, wife are no longer with us either. We don't know the circumstances. We don't know what's going on. 
So we're taking tonight, making a make it a tribute show to Chris. Oh, I pulled Vince. I freaking grabbed him in, in the back and was like, "What happened? I don't. What happened?" And he just hugged me, and I'm now I'm crying on Vince's uh, shoulder. And I'm like, uh, bro, no, this is, not again, not again. Like, nah, this ah, uh, this shit's starting to get me, bro. That shit's starting to get me. I ain't gonna hold you. That shit's starting to get me, bro. Despite what what he ended up doing, that's still just from a perspective of a friend. He just lost Eddie Guerrero. He just lost him. We just lost him. Like he said, it was like maybe a year and a half. After, and then to lose another good friend, and you have no idea what's going on. It's ah, oh, Jesus, bro. Again, I'd cry on it. He's hugging me like like a child. I mean, he's hugging me like really tight, you know. And I was like, "What? What the heck? You serious?" Yeah, it was interesting because I'd been talking to Brian Gewertz, right. and he called me earlier in the day and said, "I gotta tell you something you're gonna love," because what I found out afterwards that Bruce Campbell was originally gonna be on the show because that show was a funeral for Vince, who had just been blown up. That's uh -huh. right. That's right. And they had yeah. Bruce Campbell, who's you know from Evil Dead, and you know the actor, and he's I'm a big fan. He's got something I gotta tell you. He left a message. Yeah. So I went to the gym, I worked out with my son, Ash, yeah. got back in the car, called him back, and he's like, total change. I'm like, hey, what's going on, man? What do you got to tell me? And he's like, you're not going to want to hear this. And I, th I was thinking like, you just told me to call you back, right? Yeah, he goes, he goes this, is, this is horrible. And I was thinking, because he said earlier, I got to tell you something about Vince. Right. And when, he, when I talked to him, I thought he was going to say that Vince is going to go on the air and like bury me or something. He goes, this is horrible. This. I didn't know what he was talking about. And then he said the same thing. He's gone. Who's gone? Chris. I'm like, where do you go? Chris who? Yeah. Like, yeah. Which Chris are you talking about? Right, right. Benoit and and then and Nancy and Daniel. Same thing with me. Huge whale. I remember my son. I'll never forget. It. He goes, Daddy, you cry funny because I had to pull over on the side of the road. Yeah. Oh, and I was, damn, just, it was like bro. you said, he just. Like, I, I knew that it sounded like Chris. I'm guessing this must have been like on uh, Chris uh, Jericho's uh, podcast or whatnot. Um, I knew it sounded like Chris. Um, but yeah, even ah, that's just tough, bro. That's just tough. Even though I know Chris is kind of uh, in some hot water right now, I didn't know this interview was from uh from Chris. I know he's you know kind of in hot water right now, but still, I know how close he was to uh Chris Benoit as well. So it's just finding out that horrible news. It's, it's just never good. It just it don't. Ah, uh, I, I can't even imagine, man. It's like all three of them, right? And like, what do they have? Carbon monoxide poisoning? Do they have food poisoning? At the point in happened. time, nobody knew anything. There was, uh -huh. no, there was no details. What were the boys saying? Were the speculation? What was it? There was nothing. We didn't know. And we're like, what do you mean he's gone? Like, what happened? We don't mm -hmm. know. He's gone. We didn't know. Yeah, and and, and that's the thing. And, and then when you actually did find out uh. what had happened, it was it's still to this day we still don't know what happened. Still, and there's really don't know. no, still don't know what happened. And then and then once you actually found out what really happened, that you know. The, the details behind it with, with you know, Nancy being, you know, killed him, killing him, and killing his son, and then hanging himself for, like, Jeez, that, that's not bro. the guy we knew. That's yeah. just not the guy we knew. Yeah, and then there's so many, you know, like we said, we'll never know for sure. I still think that it's the concussion thing. Sure. The, the definitely could have hardening of sure. the brain. Absolutely. You know, I'm actually going to have Chris Lewinsky on to talk to him about it. He's great. I, he actually studied Benoit's brain. He helped me when I had my big concussion because... The you know doctors didn't know anything. Yeah, They're just like eh, there was no protocol. It was not like when I tore mm -hmm. my bicep, they were like, "Hey, you can't. You're in a sling for four months." And this, right, no, it was like, "Well, you." I go, "When can I go back to work?" Well, when you feel better. Well, Chris calls me, and and Nowinski calls me, and, and really, really, you know, I I, I think like you said, I think it was it was the, maybe one of the first times this had ever happened, and now with all the research that's been done, if mm -hmm. if there was symptoms or signs, you would know about it. But back in 2007, I think Chris's case might have been the very first. Hey, we'll never know for sure, but it gives me some kind of closure right. that I can at least believe that my friend just didn't go completely insane for no reason. Sure. At mm -hmm. least that gives me a reason. I know. And, it, I, and, and I feel your pain. And it could have just been easily one of us with all the amount of pain we've done and all the damage we've had, et cetera, et cetera. And, and understandable, that's that's a fair point, bro. That's a fair point. Because if, if you've seen any Chris Benoit match, them headbutts <laughs> from the top rope, Diving on the people at some point that's gonna catch up to you. The chair shots he was taking at some point is gonna catch up to you, you know. And there was there really wasn't that I guess you could say a protocol to make you know make sure that 
when wrestlers had concussions that they were, you know, checked out. It was more so just like, hey, whenever you're able to get back in there and 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 do what you got to do, let us know. Because the wrestling business is it's it's a, a revolving door. The longer you're out, the there's the better chance you lose your top spot. And it was always about making sure you stayed at the top or, you know, Vince would move on. And it's just, it's just tragic. That whole situation is just tragic, bro. Like, it made me get emotional just hearing other people that are close to him and them finding out the way they did. It's just, it's tough. It's tough. You know, it, it, prayers go out once again to just, you know, the rest of the family, bro. Even, it's been many, many years. It's still, that's something that don't ever go away. It doesn't, it never goes away. Like his other son just happened to not be there. But that he'll, I'm sure he still thinks about that. He tries to move on and, and try to live his life the best way he can. But it's just, that's just something that'll never truly, truly go away, man. It's 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 very, very sad. And, and it, it's just, I don't even have really words for it other than it's one of the, the saddest moments in wrestling history, bro. Comment down below. Let me know. How did you guys feel when you initially heard, when you initially found out that Chris Benoit was dead? How did how did that make you feel when you initially found out? Before you knew anything else related to what was the cause of death and what he had did in the end. How did it got how did that make you feel? I know me personally, I just couldn't believe it. I was just like, what the fuck, bro? We just lost Eddie. What the hell is going on? It, it was that was a hard episode. I remember watching that episode. That was that was a tough one, bro. That was whoo wee, that was a tough one. That was definitely a tough one. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shout out on the channel Road to 150k. And I'm still getting speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.